It's hard to deny that despite all her faults and errors, the United States of America has been a remarkable force for liberty, democracy, and human rights throughout the world. A force that ultimately came to rescue the world from the evils of Nazism. What sets America apart from most countries is that it was founded on an idea of society, one that guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what is less well known is the remarkable role that the Hebrew Bible and its values played in the formation of the United States, which I'm grateful to historian Ken Spiro for highlighting to me. Let me explain. Let's go back to the early pilgrims that settled in the land, the era preceding America's founding. Historian Gabriel Sivan wrote, quote, no Christian community in history identified more with the people of the book, the Jews, than did the early settlers of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, who believed their own lives to be a literal reenactment of the biblical drama of the Hebrew nation. They saw themselves as instruments of divine providence, a people chosen to build their new commonwealth on the covenant entered into at Mount Sinai. Early legislation of the colonies of New England were all determined by Hebrew scripture. At the first assembly of New Haven in 1639, John Davenport said, quote, scriptures do hold forth a perfect rule for the direction and government of all men in all duties which they are to perform. There was clearly a profound interest and resonance with the biblical texts in this era. And believe it or not, the Hebrew Bible played a key role in the founding of educational institutions, including Harvard, Yale, William and Mary, Rutgers, Princeton, Brown, King's College, later to be known as Columbia, John Hopkins, Dartmouth, and more. Many of these colleges adopted a Hebrew phrase as part of their official emblem or seal. The Yale seal shows a Hebrew book with the Hebrew Urim Vatumim, which was part of the Hebrew breastplate of the biblical high priest. The Columbia seal has the Hebrew name for God at the top, with the Hebrew name for one of the angels on a banner. Historian Abraham Katch wrote, At the time of the American Revolution, the interest in the knowledge of Hebrew was so widespread as to allow the circulation of the story that certain members of Congress proposed that the use of English be formally prohibited in the United States and Hebrew be substituted for it. And note that a significant number of the founding fathers of America were products of these American universities. Thomas Jefferson attended William & Mary, James Madison, Princeton, Alexander Hamilton, King's College. So we can be certain that a majority of these political leaders were not only well acquainted with the contents of the Hebrew Bible, but they even had some working knowledge of Hebrew. So clearly there was a real interest in the Hebrew Bible in the era preceding America's founding. But what impact did this have on its founding? Well. It was huge. Here are three fundamental principles enshrined in America's founding, which clearly drew inspiration from the Hebrew Bible. Number one, rights are God-given. They can't be taken away by man. Number two, skepticism of too much state power. And number three, the social contract. Let's go through them. Number one, God-given rights. Consider the opening sentences of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In other words, our rights come from God, not man, and therefore man cannot take them away. The motto in God We Trust first appeared on US currency in 1864, and a 1956 Act of Congress, which was passed as a counter to the godless communism, made it the official motto of the United States. But what do God-given rights specifically have to do with the Hebrew Bible? Well, this brings me on to point two, limits on government power. The first design for the official seal of the United States, recommended by Benjamin Franklin and John Adams in 1776, depicts the Jews crossing the Red Sea. And the motto on the seal said, quote, resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. The founders were deeply influenced by the Exodus narrative in the Bible. The lesson they learned was that God hates tyranny and government oppression, and that God wants all his children to live in freedom, to enjoy the fruit of their labors, unlike slaves. Thomas Paine's anti-monarchical pamphlet, Common Sense, cited the Hebrew Bible and the words of the prophet Samuel concluding, quote, the Almighty hath here entered his protest against monarchical government. There is a deep skepticism towards centralized political power in the Hebrew Bible, with the Bible being much more concerned with the moral health of the society at a grassroots level. 
The founders saw many of the biblical commandments as God laying out laws to protect individual human rights, the right to live in freedom. Indeed, the inscription on the Liberty Bell at Independence Hall in Philadelphia is a direct quote from Leviticus, quote, proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Another lesson in limiting government from the Hebrew Bible was the idea of separation of powers. In the Hebrew Bible, power is separated between the king, the judges, and the priests, all of whom were held accountable to the law. And the priests couldn't enjoy political power or own land. Thus, the Bible was in effect advocating the separation of church and state, of religion and power. This inspired the founders. As well as having separation of church and state, they created a separation of powers between the judiciary, the legislative, and the executive branches in order to create checks and balances on government power. And finally, number three, the social contract. In the Hebrew Bible, it speaks at length about the covenants God makes between himself and humanity and between himself and the Jewish people. The covenant works whereby each side is asked to hold up their side of the deal. God will take care of things, but in return, we must behave morally. In part inspired by this principle, Enlightenment thinker John Locke wrote of government operating according to a, quote, social contract, whereby citizens will provide consent to give government limited powers, but in return the government will guarantee protecting certain rights. We need look no further than John Adams, one of America's founders and the second president of the US, who said, I will insist the Hebrews have contributed more to civilized men than any other nation. America may well be the first time Jewish ethical ideas became legally codified into the constitution of a non-Jewish nation. I'm Oli Anisfeld, and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with JTV content, click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content, and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.